Now, on the 16th of March 2020, the WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom, in emphasizing the importance of testing in the war against COVID-19, said, and I quote, you cannot fight a fire blindfolded and we cannot stop this pandemic if we don't know who is infect infected. This, of course, is coming at a time when the government has ramped up the mass testing amongst those who are quarantined. But so just what does that test involve? That is the basis of my explainer tonight as I visited a private facility that is now conducting testing. Watch. We're here at Pathologist Lancet Kenya. It is a private laboratory that has been authorized by the government to collect samples for COVID-19 testing. Now, as you can see, this is a lab that provides various other services, not just COVID-19. And so they try to keep those separate. So various other patients are here for different tests, but they keep that separate. So what they've done here at Lancet Kenya is a drive-through test, which means the patient comes in and doesn't come into any interaction with those who are here. So let's take a look at the first patient that's coming in. It is a drive-through. Here he is making his way here. We shall call him patient X for purposes of this one. And as you can see, this is a special tent for this process. Now, this um, form that he is giving together with his insurance card or mode of payment is this here. It is a requisition form. This is what he is given by the doctor, which then talks about the symptoms and is basically a requisition form. He has handed it over to the gentleman here who is making sure that he's here for the right test. He's taken his card, could be insurance, could be a debit card. Take a look at that. He then sanitizes it before handing it back to our patient X. At this point, confirmation of the test that he's here for has been done as well as payment. If he doesn't have a card, then he would probably do it by mobile money. Remember, this is one of the directives of government. Avoid cash, avoid contact. Notice the spacing here, one meter apart. Made payment. Next step, is sample collection so patient x is now going to drive to this point which is on the side of this tent that is happening here for collection of the sample which is now going to be done by dr ngare as you can see dr ngare is fully kitted he has his glasses on his mask on and his protective gear and he's now going to take a nasal swab why is he taking a nasal swab and not a urine sample blood sample stool sample that's because the virus is known to reside mostly in the respiratory system. So he's taking that. It's a little bit uncomfortable. As you can see, he's wincing, not too painful. Once he has taken the sample, he then makes sure that he places it in the box and then, or rather in the little container, Dr. Ngare will now place it in the plastic bag and then safely into this box over here, which is a safe repository for us to carry it to the lab. Now, at this point, I want you to note something very important here, and that is the separation of the suspected case of COVID from the reception here where there are other patients. Like we said, ladies and gentlemen, it's a drive through And at this point, patient X's job is done. Thank you very much, sir. You may now drive away, go home, and he then goes home to wait for the results. So, you're wondering if you don't have a vehicle, what happens? This entire parking lot will have tents that will deal and facilitate with walk-ins. So they will come in and the procedure will be similar, except the patients will be on foot rather than in a vehicle. Again, very separate, suspected COVID cases being dealt with outside in the parking lot, in a tent or in a vehicle, separate from the reception for other patients who might be here to prevent a possible spread. So now Dr. Ngari has collected the sample and we are now ready to go to the lab for testing of the sample to determine whether patient X has the virus that causes COVID-19 or not. Dr. Ngari, shall we head to the lab? Let's go. All right, so we have now collected our sample and it's time to take it into the lab for testing. Dr. Ngari, who collected the lab specimen, is not dressed the way he was because now it is in a box and it is safe for him to carry around with not as much kit as he had. So Dr. Ngari, shall we take it into the lab? All right, let's go in. So now the real work begins. Let's go in. Let's now hand it over. We're here now. 
Dr. Rabia will be taking us through the next phase of this. Thanks. Thank you Thanks. for having us. Are we ready? You're welcome. We're entering the molecular lab right now, which is a restricted area. So if you can put on a lab coat and gloves. Okay. And the purpose of um, being fully kitted even in the lab? Is to avoid contamination. So you won't be taking any virus home and we won't be getting any of your DNA here. Uh -huh. Once we do this, then we're now ready to begin. Um, Anne is here to work with all the samples. So Dr. Rabi, what is this machine? What does PCR stand for? PCR hood basically is a safety cabinet. Yeah. It has a laminar airflow, so everything is not coming out. There's nothing that's biohazard that's coming out of the safety hood. Whatever's in there Stay is being extracted, extracted in, into the filters. The yeah. okay. I'll hand over the sample to Anne, okay. which is in the biohazard bag. Right. She will then open the sample in the safety hood. Uh -huh. The sample, which is the swab sample that was collected by Dr. Ngari, yes. is then placed into a liquid. So mm -hmm. any cellular material, any cells that have been collected on there mm -hmm. will be washed into the liquid. Okay, because you cannot test the sample as it is. As it is. And the sample is um, mucus material, is yes, it? Yes, from, from, the, from the throat, okay. any cells from the throat, nasal, All right. nasopharyngeal and the, the oropharyngeal. Okay, so that sample that you've extracted, is that what is in here? Yes. And that's what goes into the fridge? All right, just as you saw downstairs, there is no mixing of any samples of any kind. And so as you can see with the fridge here, there's an entire fridge that's separate for COVID-19 samples. And so Anne is going to place it in there. Remember, there's all the other fridges that have any other sample. And so Anne, we're doing this to make sure that there is no contamination, right? We've washed the cellular material on into the, into the liquid. Right. That then comes and gets prepared for and placed onto the extraction plate for DNA extraction. Okay. This is the material that will identify the virus. So any small amount of DNA of the virus, if it is present, it will be detected on our, on our machine. Okay. The whole system mm -hmm. involves, so first DNA extraction, mm -hmm. where all the DNA is extracted. Mm -hmm. It's then put into an amplification system where the DNA is then amplified. So when I say any small amount of DNA, um, if it's present, will be detected is because the amplification process makes millions makes of copies. Makes millions of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so what is Anne doing here on the computer? She's entering the sample numbers. Okay. So um, the, the samples that are going to be loaded onto the plate, uh -huh. she's making sure that they are identified once they... Okay. So They're sort of the labeling system. them, labeling on, them and on. making sure that, yes. okay. So once she's done that, then... So know. she's loading the sample uh -huh. onto the machine, ready for DNA extraction. Okay. The extraction will, will take place, this is all automated, so it's a closed system. Okay. There's no external contamination that can take place, because okay. once the samples are loaded, all right. the automatically extracted. Okay. okay, so here we're extracting the COVID uh, DNA from from, from all this, the cellular material. From all the cellular that's, material that's of the human being yes. that's been collected. Yes. What then happens here? Right, so the extraction is done. The extracted sample is loaded onto the plate. Okay. And this plate is what goes into the machine. Uh huh. In there yeah. is where the amplification will take place now. Okay. So okay. this process is actually the, the actual PCR process. Okay. Which, is which stands for polymerase chain reaction. Okay. And you're amplifying it so that... So that we have enough product to be picked up um, onto the machine and say, yes, this DNA uh, is the one that's present. Okay. So the, the DNA sequence of the COVID is what it will be detected. I see. Okay. Once the amplification is taken place, then the results are then automatically loaded, loaded onto, here. onto the computer, okay. which will tell us which ones are positive and which ones are negative. How long can this whole process take? Once uh, the sample is received in the lab, it takes about two hours before you have results ah. on the computer. And how many samples can that uh, machine uh, test? It will test 92 samples. Um, the whole plate is 96, but then we need to load controls at the same time to make sure a negative is a negative and a positive is a positive. Okay. So 90, 90, 92 samples 
at a go. So okay. we have results in two hours for 92 patients. Okay. Um, there are other types of machines that can do the same testing. Yeah. It's called the Gene Expert. And this one, however, will only be able to do four patient samples at a time. Uh -huh. It's a cartridge-based system, mm -hmm. so the sample is loaded into a cartridge mm -hmm. and placed in here. This takes 45 minutes. So once you're done with this, then um, the results are then either auto-emailed to to the the doctor, the patient, the ministry is informed. Um, I, they are in the process of setting up a platform where anybody who is doing testing will be able to enter results. So then they can also monitor how many positives and okay. negatives there. All right. All right, now, so we're done from the lab. I've taken off my gloves, my mask, and my lab coat. And we're now ready to have a conversation with Dr. Ahmed Kalebi, who's the CEO of Pathologist Lancet Kenya. Hodi, hodi. Hi. Hi. How have you Hi, been? Dr. Kalebi, how are you? Mama Ramagan. Salama sana. Please have a seat. Thank you. All right, Dr. Kalebi, we've seen the elaborate process in the lab. How much does it cost to test one person, one sample? The kits currently in the market for us as a private lab to procure, if you calculate, it comes to about 35 to $50 per test. So that's about 3,000 3, to 5,000 5, Kenyan shillings. And per that is test. just for the reagents okay. per test. Now. When you are doing a test, you remember you have the reagents which goes on the machine. Right. You have the consumables, you know, the materials that you collect the swab with, all the personal protective equipment that are disposable. If you add all gloves, those cases, the gloves the mask, and everything, the then you have you have other things that you are using inside the lab, even without the overheads and other things, that can easily go to up, up to another uh, one thousand shillings to two thousand shillings. So for us as a private lab, our costing cannot go less than six thousand. Fortunately for us, we already have the equipment that we are using for other PCR, whether it's But for how HIV. much would that equipment cost? You are looking at minimum of 5 million shillings to about 12 million shillings per equipment, and this is small scale. Like the equipment at the government, they have the large scale that they use for HIV viral load. That's, that's pretty expensive. I think nobody buys it. Most of the time we get it through donation. Like for us in the laboratory, we don't, we rarely buy it. We get it on placement. This right. is basically how it works. Either the government has allocated some funds for this, or they get donor funding. Okay. Most of the programs, like now for this COVID, uh -huh. most of the funding will come from, part of it from the government, part of it from, for example, from World Bank. So for both government and those in private testing, I mean, it's been one heck of a job just scaling up, getting the right capacity, getting the right equipment and everything that we need. And considering this is a global problem, the demand is high everywhere. How difficult has it been to set up the capacity and the equipment needed here locally? It's as stressful as I've ever been because it's not just stress for us, it's stress for our suppliers, it's stress for the manufacturers. It's not available. These things are just not available. We particularly buy most of our reagents, most of Africa for that matter, through Europe, particularly Germany. That's where most of the factories are. Right now, Germany has one of the highest burdens of COVID. They had to ramp up their own production. Now, if they are supplying the world, they first of all have to supply themselves. themselves. The other big producer is America. But you know what happened in America. They had a problem in terms of shortfall, in terms of number of testing. Their president decreed that they must ramp it up. They want to have like 50 million tests like within two weeks or three weeks. They have no capacity to export to anybody. And that's not just about and reagents, even masks, gloves, gowns. If you had all the money in the world today and you want to buy, there's nowhere to buy. So is the solution to produce these reagents locally? Can we do that? No, it, it's not even a solution right now because for you to produce a reagent, you have to go through certain processes, including quality control. If we are to start, we cannot scale up to the need right now. Our best, what is good for us, our mm -hmm. best hope, actually, uh, what is... Uh, fair for us mm -hmm. is if whatever is being produced, some of it is allocated for us. So Pathologist Lancet Kenya is, is a private facility and is now conducting these tests privately. So tell us about that. How does it work? Can I just walk in here and get a test done? We actually, as a laboratory, uh, are an actual reference lab. That's how we have been categorized, category F. And we are registered by both the Medical Laboratory Technology and Technicians Board and the Medical Council, the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council, to do PCR tests. When the doctor calls us to ask us whether we can do the test, we say no. You have to go to the government. Even patients, when they call, we say call the hotline. 
so that you can be assisted because there is a criteria, what we call case definition. Yes. So the government get a case definition. For people who meet the case definition, we refer them to the government. Now, for people who don't meet the case definition, if a doctor feels that there's an indication for it, we still go ahead and, with your doctor's request, do the test for you. And then those yes. results are then shared with Absolutely. the government. Absolutely, we shared with the government instantly. So we cannot depend on sending samples outside. We have to develop our own capacity. Okay. And this is just the beginning. The worst is yet to come. I can promise you that. Thanks for that. I think that's a good place to leave it, Dr. Kalebi. And thank you for the reality check.